All right, so Bray, let's talk about the prevalence and the burden of sickle cell disease in the U.S. and also globally. So as many people know, sickle cell disease is really the most common inherited disorder of the red cell worldwide. It's estimated that about 100,000 Americans live with sickle cell disease, but we don't have a registry, so we're not sure that's based on population estimates. Uh, but it's also important to rec recognize that it's a global disease, and most of the burden of sickle cell disease is really outside of the United States. In fact, it's estimated that about 300,000 babies are born every year across the globe with sickle cell disease. Um, and more than half of the newborns are born in three countries, that being Nigeria, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, and India. That said, we have a tremendous burden in this country, in the United States. Um, we have a um, uh, high burden not only in terms of numbers, uh, but also the burden in terms of the impact on individuals living with the disease. And I'm sure we'll get into that, but if you talk to patients, one of the things that's most burdensome uh, is the common manifestation of the disease being the acute painful crisis episodes or, or a basal occlusive crisis. And that comes out of nowhere. Uh, patients can be feeling fine one day and then have a painful episode the next and it lands them in the hospital or an emergency department. Uh, so it causes burdens not only to the individual with the disease, but also their caregivers who might have to take time off of work. Um, and it's burdensome to society in many ways. Um, it's very hard to take care of individuals with a chronic condition, particularly in light of, as you put it, recent history of us not having much in the way of treatment options. Um, it's very expensive. There are estimates that say it costs on uh, an annual basis in the United States about $2 billion just to take care of the acute care costs associated with sickle cell disease. So. And so I can imagine that providers in the community are more likely than not to see a sickle cell patient. Can you speak to what you think the uh, potential for a doctor in the community um, getting a new sickle cell patient in their practice? Well, I think that that's an excellent question. I think that uh, in the past, sickle cell disease was really thought to be a mainly pediatric disease because uh, just a few decades ago, children weren't expected to always make it to adulthood. But more recent data suggests that more than 95% of children born with sickle cell disease are expected to survive into adulthood, which means adult practitioners, whether that be primary care physicians, obstetricians, gynecologists, or adult hematologists, oncologists for that matter, will be seeing more and more individuals with sickle cell disease as the population survives longer. And so we do have to make sure that we expose and educate our providers about sickle cell disease. And I wanna to speak to Dr. Shah, Nirmish, how does it present? What are the clinical presentations that sickle cell um, shows up within the ER, in the doctor's office, in the hospital? Yeah, so I think it's a good point that was brought up that we're having more and more patients survive into adulthood. And the reason that's a, a good point to bring up is that it's more likely for a practitioner, a hospitalist, a provider in general to, to see all the clinical manifestations. And what was brought up is probably the first thing that everyone thinks of, which is pain. And so when we say vaso-occlusive crisis, we're talking about a, a crisis which is causing pain for these patients. But if you think about it, sickle cell affects every organ in the body. Uh, and so in that sense, we have to consider that every organ can be affected by sickle cell disease. And most notably, some of the issues that we really have to be concerned about and are extremely uh, problematic and, and are, are severe complications include stroke. And so, you know, when blood, blood's not going to the brain, that, that's a stroke. If you have blood not going to the lungs, that's acute chest. Uh, one of the n number one causes of death in, in sickle cell disease. Uh, infection is higher in sickle cell disease. And, and of course, uh, uh, numerous other complications that are all uh, leading to clinical manifestations that we have to consider. And so the doctors who see them, both in primary care and specialty care, need to be aware of these potential complications and put the pieces together to really truly comprehensively take care of these patients um, in their practice. 